right, I'd like to ask everyone to introduce themselves to the group. Ian, financial analyst. Penelope, private fund deal manager. Uh, Mark, derivative portfolio analyst. These are incredibly dangerous financial times for an investment bank like ours. Potentially the Great Depression's more brutal sequel. So, think optimal, adaptive strategies. <clears throat> Inspiration is when we pull up memories stored in the mind. That is how we want you to treat this. Picture everything that has happened with the credit crisis so far as one big brain. You're the thought processes, accessing this past and making connections. Feel free to go anywhere pertaining to the crisis, pre or post subprime, it's all relevant. Everyone will get materials tailored to them. This is Rose and Paul. And this is our artist, Sarah. She'll be helping us visualize our thoughts today. Rose is going to uh, pass around a basket. If you want to take a few characters each. Apart from the characters to start you off, you'll also get videos, books, articles. We even have props. Okay, just to give us a bit of a warm up, Ian. Why don't you give us one of your roles? Um, a private equity head. Okay. Market panic as crisis spreads. Okay. Here's your scenario. I'm a business associate of yours, and we're in the lift first thing in the morning, and I'm telling you how I've heard so-and-so has lost their job because of the crunch. And I'm complaining that no one's safe anymore. What do you say in response? Now, give me something I'm not expecting. Back during the Wall Street boom before the Great Depression, everyone was superstitious. They had to be. They couldn't offset risk the way we can today. Anyway, one ritual among the investors was to visit Lady Luck, a renowned prostitute. <laughs> At the height of the boom, thousands were seeing her. Lady Luck could make a man see the future. Spend the night with her and you'd be charmed. If you lost big, they said you hadn't been to see Lady Luck enough. She was obsessed with gambling and chance. She found luck and fate to turn on. <laughs> then, at the height of her popularity, she revealed she had syphilis and that she was going insane from it. There was a good chance she'd spread it through all of Wall Street. The next morning saw a frenzy of selling. That's the real story behind the Great Depression. And the one thing an investor doesn't want to know is how connected everything is. Who's Lady Luck now? Subprime. It always had the stink of poverty on it, packed in trailer trash with triple A's. They said it was safe as houses, but some houses aren't safe. All poverty's contagious. Fed starts acting like a fool in the shower. Now the water's scalding. Anyone notice Rome is burning? Wake up, people. earnings ratio 43, ethical bonds 79 and a half, Nikkei 225, Renminbi 6.8189 to dollar. Penelope, let's hear your role. I'm a hedge fund manager. Babel Capital Management, can I help?
Thanks for lending me your jet. When do you want it back? No hurry, I've got others. Uh, which horse today? Soft Viagra in the first. You want in? No. Right, look. If it's known it can be bet on, if it can be bet on, it's already useless. So only bring me that which cannot be bet on before it's known. <sighs> Mortals are totally <laughs> incompetent. OK. Alpha topic, weathering the bad times, part 30. Let's throw some ideas at the wall, see what sticks. Right. Uh, food prices tripling over five months. This must have created some opportunities we haven't tried yet. All right. Um, shortage, poverty, hunger, weight loss. Short oh. large clothing manufacturers and go long on companies making smaller sizes. Short Short Weight Watchers, the major gyms and scale manufacturers. OK, fine. The bigger picture, probable outcome, staple foods too expensive for too long. They become luxuries in ways unimaginable since World War II. Fat becomes the new thin and fashionable again. Fat? Or at least healthily chubby. So, long-term plan. One, short fat first and go long on thin. Two, later go long on fat. So when fat's down, we can buy fat cheap. Meanwhile, go short on thin. So when fat comes by a cup, we'll be flush. <laughs> or flesh. <laughs> oh, fat people from a thin market. How depressing. Who'd have thought the credit crisis would be so devastating? Penelope, when finance dies, the world spirit dies. They'll never forget the liquidity drought of 2008. Mark my words, doomsday is upon us. With today's systemic trust issues, the only way to turn a profit is to capture that distrust. Now, mm. since we can't trade debt anymore, we'd better harness what the market thinks of itself because there's not much else to bet on. Well, what about fundamentals, the true value companies, that kind of thing? Fundamentals? They don't exist. The market decides them. But everyone's already betting on the market mood. That's why I've come up with a totally unprecedented way of harnessing the market's sentiment. I've come up with this. You'll find it. An extremely elegant procedure, I hope. Oh, I'd better get this. Hello? No, I'm not comfortable with that. Oh, very elegant indeed. Any downside risk? Foolproof. Well, fab. So, who shall we use it on? How about Evergain? They've finally gone public. Only take a little push, a few calls. That would make for some lucrative volatility. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good. That's interesting. Has Babel really found a way to profit from the anxiety of today's marketplace? <laughs>